Today, we're brewing espresso with the Dumo distribution tool. Welcome. My name is Patrick Rolf, and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we're going to continue to explore espresso. Espresso is something really interesting, something that is hard to get right, and something that we are investing a lot of time and energy in trying to improve here at April. Uh, part of that is competing in the World Barista Championship that's coming up in Melbourne later in September. Now, on that journey, naturally, I'm trying a few different tools. I'm trying to figure out how can I make tastier espresso. And this is a little bit of an update on where I am now. And then we want to talk a little bit about this, uh, the Dumo Vice distribution tool. Distribution tools in general is quite interesting when it comes to espresso. There's been a few different versions of the, I believe Sasa's versions from Ona Coffee is one of the more famous ones, at least one of the more initial ones kind of showcased on the market or in a competition. And after that, there's been various different iterations of it. April has its own version as well that we initially have worked with here in the April store as well, made together with Akiko and Ken here in Copenhagen. Uh, absolutely beautiful. But what we want to do in this video is just to kind of use the Duma tool, um, try it, talk a little bit about what we find taste-wise with it, because it is quite an interesting tool. Um, and for those of you that don't know more about this, the idea is to actually distribute the puck a lot more even. So when we work with a classic distribution tool, what we do is that we basically just move the very top of the copy. So let's say the top 50%. And it goes without saying that you kind of wonder what happens with the bottom 50%, right? And a lot of this comes down to, for example, small clumps in your coffee. It comes down to the fact that when you're actually turning the coffee with a traditional tool, what you do is you, to some extent, actually push it down, which is not necessarily optimal. Now, we can't really have a discussion about distribution tools without talking about extraction rates. So most people, when they argue the use of distribution tool, they basically say, okay, we extract higher, therefore it tastes better. We extract higher. Therefore, it tastes better. And it's the same thing with Dumo, at least when it comes to like content that people have been putting out. They've been doing a bunch of measurements, and they basically say that using the Dumo tool will allow you to extract more, therefore, it tastes better. Now, we've done a bunch of measurements as well, and there's no measurements up till date from us that is showcasing that we're necessarily extracting more just by using the tool. It just isn't a fact at the moment. We continue to do, to do measurements and see if that will change. Um, but at the moment, if we benchmark, for example, the April distributor versus the Dumo, we don't see a difference in terms of extraction, right? So if that's the argument, then no, that's not the case. However, I'm gonna personally go on record and say that the Dumo tool makes our espresso taste much better. Now, at the moment, we limited the use of it to what we do here. We actually got into a point where here in the store, we actually start using it as well. Um, I'm arguing it's interesting because of what it does with the tactility of the espresso. So it's not so much that the flavor is better or worse. It's a lot more about the tactility of the actual espresso, which I think is super important. And what it does is that it just makes it basically smoother, a bit thicker, um, just better structured overall, which allows us to brew our kind of classic shots that are a little bit longer in volume. Uh, to get a better texture, right? That's one of the things that we are really kind of thinking a lot about. So we're just going to brew one now and uh, talk a little bit about our current kind of go-to recipe um, to simulate more of a home setup. Uh, we're brewing this on a fixed nine bar pressure, uh, actually pushing the temperature up at 95 degrees. That's one of the things that I've been doing lately to actually increase the temperature when I brew espresso because I think it tastes a bit better. I'm using the Mythos grinder that you see standing behind me. It's basically, basically the grinder that's going to be used in competition, which is why we have it. Traditionally, we use something else here at April. Um, so basics, 20 gram basket, we're dosing 19 grams. So I tend to always down dose at least one gram from the basket size. And this is just to make sure that the coffee has enough room to just expand. In my experience, it just ends up tasting a lot better, right? Uh, so first step here is to actually make sure that all of the coffee sits down properly in the filter. And I do that by just knocking the top here, right? It's super simple. You also want to do this from a competition perspective because if your coffee actually goes above the basket when you're distributing or when you're tapping, 
um, the pitch is actually that is an uneven or uh, inconsistent puck preparation, right? So that's something that you should consider. Uh, now, with this tool, it's important to consider that the speed of the turning actually makes a lot of sense. When we use a traditional tool, we kind of pop it in and we do it really quickly. It's not going to work here because if you do it too quickly, you're not going to have a uniform bed. So basically, twist it down. It's a little bit of magnet that keeps it together. And then I pull five. Just slow twists. And that's all you need. You go up. And then what you end up with is this really kind of smooth, even base here that has eliminated a lot of the kind of clumps that comes in the coffee. Um, tamping wise, it's about the same. I don't really feel any difference. Uh, still argue that tamping is very, very important in terms of quality of espresso. So you wanna make sure that you dial in your tamp to be consistent, which is why we use this kind of tamper to kind of alleviate to make sure that we all tamp the same, which is very important. Uh, basically making sure we have the same depth, which translates into the same pressure, right? So we're gonna pull this espresso, 52 grams out. And we're gonna do it in 23 seconds. Here we go, pretty straightforward. So basically down to brewing time as well, right? I'm not saying 23 or 20 seconds is your kind of go to always. Uh, what I am saying is that I very rarely go up around 30 seconds. I definitely don't go, go above 30 seconds. I guess it's a taste preference. Uh, naturally, when it comes to espresso brewing, it's also based on how are you roasting this coffee? What is the kind of base of what you work with? Um, here we're working with a coffee that is developed a little bit more than what we're used to. Uh, especially for a competition perspective um, and basically coming out at a little bit of a lower electron so basically a darker roasted coffee without being too dark and with that comes the ability to extract it a little bit different from what we do now i recently saw a video um, by someone saying that a light roasted espresso should be extracted more than a darker roasted which i don't necessarily agree with I think there's a lot of ideas about espresso brewing in general that doesn't make much sense. But then again, it comes down to taste preference, right? So all of the rules that we find online is just based on someone making an espresso that they really like. And obviously we're gonna have different ways to reach that because we all like different espresso, right? Which is totally fine. Uh, I tend to go for very balanced espresso with our flavor forward, that's super important. They can't be too acidic. Um, they can definitely not be bitter. And a good espresso is kind of something that should leave you want to drink another one, which is very rare. I can't really remember the last time I had an espresso and felt I really needed a second one after that, right? But for me, this little tool, the Dumo, is actually one of the more interesting new innovations when it comes to any kind of espresso preparation, right? So this is the kind of one tool I've seen that is actually making my espresso better. So for me, it's worth the investment. Um, it's something that I would happily take up in a competition as well. And it's something that we're going to continue to kind of explore with as well, because we think that this is just the beginning. There's probably more we can do with that as well. Um, so yeah, this was just a little bit of a short introduction to where we are now in terms of espresso, this little distribution tool and what it kind of comes up. Uh, if you are buying a new distribution tool or if you're buying your first distribution tool, have a look at something like this. I'm sure it doesn't have to be the Duma. I'm sure there's other kind of needle functions that are out there that you could use as well. But I would argue that a needle style would be where you want to be because that's going to make your espresso tastier than the other options that's on the market at the moment. Now, as per usual, I take this conversation to Patreon and we're talking a lot more espresso there. Um, further on, we have a little bit of an announcement here. Um, in a few months time, we're gonna change a little bit here on the channel with April. We're basically gonna move away from doing a lot of the kind of brewing reviews and stuff that we've been doing. That is not really April specific. We feel that the YouTube community is doing enough of that. There's enough opinions and thoughts on new kind of crazy little gadgets. And to be fair, we're, we're really focused on just making the best coffee possible. So a lot of these gadgets that we've been playing with, we feel it's just not up our alley. It's just not what we're focusing on here on the industry and kind of 
as a content creator as well. So we're going to move away a little bit from that, but we're going to keep you updated on this. It's not going to happen overnight. It will take a little bit of time, but eventually later in the year, you're going to see a little bit of different content coming up from us. Now, with that, we want to thank you for watching. And if you have any questions on Espresso, your own experience, what's your favorite distribution tool, please just comment below. We're always happy to have that conversation. Thank you very much and have a good day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.